You remember we were talking about how the iPhone 12 mini, it, it was starting to look like maybe it wasn't selling, hmm. but we didn't have exact numbers. It was based on the average sales price of a phone and they were trying to figure out, okay, amongst the iPhone 12, if we look at the average, can we kind of decipher which percentage are gonna be that iPhone 12 mini? And so anyway, it wasn't, it wasn't the most detailed information when we first started talking about it, but there was speculation that the iPhone 12 mini was a little bit of a flop, mm -hmm. even though people in the tech community ranted and raved, more raving than ranting. Mm -hmm. For the most part, they said, it's cool that we got this small option that's out there. Well, it goes to show you that sometimes, sometimes, Will, the loud voices are not the voices of majority and the voices of majority, when they go and they vote inside the website when they're about to order the thing up. I was gonna say when they stand inside the store, but no one's going no, to no. the store. What am I talking about here? When they're st when they're sitting on the website, they gotta pull the trigger themselves. They're saying, I, I can't have this mini one. That's what they're saying. And the evidence uh -huh. is right there. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter uh, what, what the loudest signal you're hearing. It's what, what, is, the, what is the authentic one? What, what is the true one? And that shows up in the data here. Here we can see October to November 2020, iPhone 12 mini represented by that dark purple at the end of the chart. And you can see it accounts for a very small percentage of iPhone 12 sales. I believe it, I mean, it looks like 6%. That's a 6% chunk, which pales in comparison to, well, obviously the stock iPhone 12, but also the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max, which are stacked up right next to it. In fact, it's it's a smaller number than the iPhone SE, which is in orange. And you know, I love graphs. Well, mm. I feel that we can derive some quick information and context here and figure out the scale. You can see the iPhone 12 mini is just, I, I, it's impossible to call it a hit at that point. And you look at this graph and you start to wonder about the future for it. You start to wonder if they'll ever do it again. Mm -hmm. Can they afford, like what is their, how is their uh, profit margin impacted by the fact that the volume on that particular model is lower than they had imagined? And I guess it, software development as well. Yeah, there's going to be extra work involved in carrying an extra model. Yeah. E even as far as keeping the extra listing on the site and the set of components that are necessary for that one. They may just ditch it all together because it looks like people like the iPhone SE better. They think, hey, if I'm going to get a small phone, I'll just get the budget model at 399 mm -hmm. and call it a day. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not in it for the cost savings effect, then I'm gonna go all the way up to the regular iPhone 12 or even the Pro or Pro Max model, which you can see occupy the majority. Uh, iPhone 12 models as a whole accounts for 76% of iPhone sales in the US in October and November. So people are still buying the older models too within this graph, obviously. Uh, the remaining 24%, mostly iPhone, SE and iPhone 10R and a little bit of iPhone 11 in there. I guess iPhone 11 is a pretty big chunk too, about the mm -hmm. same size as the iPhone SE. But either way, I guess it's a bit of a sad thing that we had thought maybe there was a market for a premium flagship level tiny phone, but it's not looking so good based on these figures that, that that's going to be a thing that hangs around as much as an individual might love it. Uh-huh.